Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth, may the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, our Lord, our Rock, our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. This week, as I was studying the Acts passage um, about Paul and Silas, how they go into the town and they get arrested and they're in the jail, and the earthquake, there was one guy in the whole story that just kept bugging at me. The jailer. I mean, think about it. The one guy in the whole story that he tries to take his life, he tries to, um, well, he's in a lot of trouble after all the, 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 or the jail cells are open. So I want you to look at this. I'm going I'm to read some of this text that we just read, but I want you to think of the jailer. Put yourself in his shoes for just a second here. If my iPad will work. Nope. That's all right. I'm gonna let y'all do it upstairs. Uh, can you go to verse 25? On oh my, there we go. And about midnight, so Paul and Silas are already in prison. Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. So what were they doing? They were worshiping, but at midnight, not at eight o'clock in the morning. And the prisoners were listening to them. Go to the next slide. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. <coughs> and then the last, you know, it's not going to let me do that. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bonds were unfastened. It goes on here in a little bit, right? And it talks about how the guard wakes up, he's looking around, he takes his knife and he's about ready to kill himself. What was he thinking? What was he going through his head? He knows that if all the prisoners leave, if all of them escape and it's on his watch, him and his family can be killed. He knows the consequences of losing prisoners. And yet he changes a heart. He ends up believing. He ends up trusting in God. But even that would cost him something. Think about it. So as a Roman soldier, your allegiance was to the state. Caesar was God. He was the top one. You had all these other gods, but you worshiped Caesar. You worshiped all these other gods. And you want to give it up? Why trust in this God? Now, we're all Lutherans, most of us in here. We know God, right? We spend plenty of time going through the catechism, memorizing all those verses, reading our Bibles, listening to the sermons. Me and Pastor Tyner and some of us trained go through tons and tons of hours knowing all the right doctrines. We know God here. We know him in our heads. But do we know him here? This world knows God, knows who Jesus is. You know, you can walk down uh, the streets of any major town here in the United States, and somebody, and you ask them who is Jesus, they'll be able to give you a basic definition. They can tell you what Christmas is. They know what Easter is. They know all the facts But they know him here, not here. What 
What would change this jailer's heart? The story doesn't tell us any detail of what it was spoken of. It doesn't say, here's Paul's great oratory, here's his great sermon. But who is Jesus? I'm going to take a moment here. I'm going to talk to camp for just a second, but it matters to the rest of you guys too. Because most of our kids are showing up this summer, by the way. You just start looking around at kids, and my two kids will be there. I'll definitely pray for whoever gets my two kids, by the way. <laughs> at least my son. It's his first year. Hopefully I don't get called. But... What are you going to tell those kids? They know Jesus. But they're going to be coming from probably broken homes. They may have a parent who's absent. There's going to be some that have stories that are horrendous. There's going to be ones that have been picked on and bullied in school. What are you going to tell them? Why does Jesus matter to them? Why does Jesus matter to anybody? I've got three points, though. I, you could pick whatever. I think there may be some more, but... These were the three that I came up with. I'm going to try it again. Let's see if this will let me do it. The first one, let's look at this Bible verse. John chapter 1. And it says, Haha, it worked. In verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of only the Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. See, there are lots of gods out there, or gods that we follow. We follow money. We follow people, we follow ideas, and let's be really honest, we probably follow ourselves a lot. We put ourselves at the top. But God, the creator of the universe, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. See, in Jesus, God knows what it's like. You know those pains that we have? We're sitting in uh, mourning of somebody that we've lost, sitting in a doctor's office, struggling, having those pains and those sufferings, having discourse and arguments. Our God knows what it's like. He walked on this earth. He knew what it meant to get tired. He knew what it meant to get hungry. He saw his friend Lazarus die. He argued a lot with the Pharisees. He understood what it's like to be human. It's not some God that's up in the sky that is all about themselves, but you actually have a present God who knows what it means to be in your shoes. Because he's walked that path. He knows what it's like to be human. 
My next one comes from Luke chapter 2. And this is in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's praying to God and asking God to take this cup. He knows he's about ready to die. But I want you to watch this. He says, Father, if uh, you are willing, remove this cup. So he's thinking of the death from me. Nevertheless, do not do my will, but yours be done. We have a God who actually cares. He cares about each and every one of us. We see it in his actions throughout all scripture. He goes and he sees the blind man and he's suffering and he's struggling. And he heals him. He see the uh, Lazarus dead being raised because he cares for Mary and Martha. We see over and over and over again a compassion for the broken. A compassion for those that are suffering. We see a God who actually cares about us. So much so that he's willing to put himself last. To put you first while he's on the cross. We have a God who cares. My last one comes from Matthew chapter 28, the last part where he's sending out his disciples. And I cut everything out, but I just want us to look at one part of that verse. And behold, I am with you always, as to the end of the age. God is promising. God is saying he will be present. All other gods, they're more worried about themselves. They're more worried about uh, fulfilling their needs. They're more worried about everything that they are in charge of. You know, if, you're, if money has become your god, guess what? Everything revolves around it. If you yourself have become your God. Everything revolves around you. And you miss out being present in others' lives because you've made yourself higher. We have a God who physically is with us. You have a God who actually, he's present in our midst. Now, I don't know what Paul and Silas said to this jailer. But I think he could have talked about what God means to us. What it meant to him. Maybe the greatest gift is that we can share is what does God mean to us? And I think too often we get into the intellect side of who God is and we forget how he actually impacts our lives. How we have a God who knows what it's like to be us. For that kid who's struggling with uh, being bullied Guess what? Jesus was bullied. We have a God who doesn't know or struggled, uh, who walked alongside us. For those kids who are from broken homes, from those kids that are struggling, Jesus knows what it's like. Jesus knows each and one of them. 
And he cares so much for them. And he cares for us. And he's actually present with us. There's a lot of things we can share. But why don't we just give him Jesus? Why don't we just give them the person who changed the world? Went from a God in the sky to a God who walks alongside us. Who knows what it's like to be human. Who has compassion. And who's present. It's all about Jesus. Amen. Now may the grace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until he comes again. Amen.